The Lost Activist Thin body, shabby clothes typical of the periphery, his face has become a symbol of the struggle for human rights against oppression. His screams were able to shake the tyrannical government beating the loud sound of hard rock and rock and roll music. Fight, a single word shouted across the asphalt road echoing between the high-rise buildings. One word that has become a symbol of resistance to injustice. Ouija Thako, whose name is echoed throughout the country as a writer and human rights fighter, is wanted as a missing person. So, what happened to him? Who is Ouija Thuko? How's the story? This is the biography of Ouija Thuko, a writer and human rights activist whose words were able to shake the hearts of the unjust rulers so that he was silenced and lost without knowing the jungle. Ouija Thuko S Profile Ouija Widodo's Name Place of Birth Sorjanan, Solo, Central Java Date of Birth August 23, 1963 Died missing since July 27, 1998. Literature profession, activist. City Diasujur is partner. Children, featuring Ganthi Wani and Fahar Mira. Ouija Widodo. His real name was born into a Catholic family in Sorjenin, Solo, August 26, 1962. His father is a rickshaw puller. His mother sometimes sells seasoned chicken to help the family's economy. The name Thukul which means to grow was assigned to him by Sempela Award when he was active in theater with Sarong Teter Jag, Jagalon Tanga, Wijithukul, which means seeds, that grow. He was born, as the eldest, of three children, in a marginalized community. The majority, of the population, are pedicab drivers and laborers, including, his father who also works, as a pedicab driver. Living in the midst of the marginalized, he often observes and records the reality of the marginalized people through poetry. Since he was in elementary school, Thukul has started to like to write poetry. After graduating from elementary school, he continued his education at SMP Nagri 8 Solo. While in junior high school, he became interested in the world of theater. He also continued his education at the Indonesian Karawitan Middle School, SMKI, majoring in dance. Due to the increasingly difficult family economic constraints, he decided to drop out of school when he was in the second grade, as the eldest child, he feels he has responsibility for his family, especially his two younger siblings. After dropping out of school, he made a living by selling newspapers 
brokered cinema tickets, and was also a varnisher at a furniture company in Solo. Through his schoolmates, he joined the group theater Jagalantanga, Jagat. Together with Jagat's friends, Thukul once sang poetry. From village to village, in several cities such as Solo, Jogja, Klaadan, to Surabaya. In October 1989, Thukul married Siddhidiya or later known as Sipin. They met at the Universe Theatre Studio. Both of them are active in art activities in Solo and often appear together in a theatrical play. Thukul and Sipin both come from marginalized groups, they then live in the village of Kalongan which is famous for frequent flooding during the rainy season. The environment is also filled with small tenement houses that are crowded so that it looks shabby. With his marriage to Sipin, Thukul was blessed with a daughter, Fitri Nganthiwani, and a son, Fahar Mira. Fahar Mira is now continuing his father's struggle through music by singing his father's poems, Ouija Thukul. His body is emaciated, although fear has become a part of life under the Suharto regime. It seems that Thukul is not afraid of death. His poems and activities are always colored with resistance to the tyranny of the rulers. In 1992, as a resident of Jagalan Purung Sai, Thukul took part in a demonstration against environmental pollution by textile factory, PT, original Solasar Icolor. In 1993, Thukul and his friend, Semsra Sion, formed Jaker, People's Work Network, a network of artists engaged in creativity and creativity. His courage of not being afraid to die continued in 1994. There was a mass action by farmers in Nawi, East Java. Thukul who led the crowd and gave speeches was beaten by military officers. In 1995, Thukul again became the driving force of a large demonstration of protests by employees of PT. Srutex. At that time, he was beaten by the authorities until he injured his hearing and was almost blind, leaving his eyes disabled when he was hit by a car. Since then, he has been targeted, because, he is suspected, of being the mastermind behind, the demonstration and his poems, are suspected of being a motivator, for mass protests. On July 22, 1996, Thukil went, to Jakarta, to join Jaker with the People's Democratic Party, PRD. B. Thukil is head, of Propaganda Division and editor, of the Liberation Sala. Initially, Jaker had a commitment not, to be involved, in politics. But along with, the increasingly volatile politics in Indonesia, Thukil decided, to join the People's Democratic Party, PRD and get involved in practical politics. Thukul's colleagues were filled with disappointment over his choice to enter politics, including his theater teacher, Sempela Uwarda. According to him, an artist should not be involved in practical politics because it could endanger his own safety, he said. Thukul, choose carefully when it comes to practical politics. There is a possibility that you will be caught, killed, dumped, and chased. 
However, Thukul's determination was unanimous and ready to accept all the risks of his decision. Since 1996, Thukul is known as a folk artist and a part of the PRD, has socialist views and is in political opposition to the New Order regime. In the same year, through his poem entitled Warning, Thukul had popularized the word opponent, until a director of Komnas Ham, Munir Said Thalib, commented. That short sentence shows Ouija Thukul's choice of life. It is not an easy choice. Ouija Thukul has paid a heavy price. He has become a victim of the practice of disappearance.